Hey guys, I'm Giant on Occasion, and today we are finally kicking off a campaign, like, properly. You know, you've seen bits. You've seen, like, oh, here's the first handful of turns, so I can show you how the guys do the things. But now I'm just gonna do the things, it's gonna be great. Um, so this is episode one. Not a campaign preview, no, no, episode one. There's going to be an episode two. Isn't that good? I'm, I'm just, yeah, screw all the time limits and, and embargo deadlines. If there's the odd day where there just isn't an episode because I, I run out of time for this embargo, then wait a couple days and we're going to carry on because this is what I love doing. I love playing a campaign through, so I'm going to do it. And I'm really excited to be doing it. And I think the content will be better for the fact that I'm so excited about it. So let's get to it. We're playing as Meow Yin. Uh, so I've already done a campaign preview episode of it, but we're starting again because I want this to flow from you know, beginning to end. So, let's go. This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic turned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, Lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him. Yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became... Executioner. A single shot, bound in faith forsaken, pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here, in the north? Beyond the maelstrom, in the realm of chaos, in the forge of souls. Is he alive? Wounded and dying, and risen in shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. <laughs> I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse, ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos, and I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All roots have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah, the tome unveils a spell to summon a portal. One to bypass the maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally. One who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. And so, the Realm of Chaos campaign, which of course is the main campaign for Total War Warhammer 3. So the winds of magic royal, stirred into a tempest by the roar of a dying god, now demon and mortal alike must break through the Eldritch Storm and enter the Realm of Chaos in search of the ultimate prize. Will the demonic lords of chaos claim victory and find favour with their dark masters? Or shall the denizens of the world, scarred by constant war, endure the trials and temptations of the Chaos Realm? The choice is yours. Grand Cathay, past the mountains of Morn, and the steppes beyond lies the fabled, uh, fabled empire of Cathay. Travellers returning from the eastern reaches tell tales of jade cities and golden pagodas. 
They recount strange creatures from serpentine dragons to monolithic stone sentinels, and flying sky junks that ra uh, rain multi-hued firepower from up above. But most of all, they tell of the imposing and disciplined armies that march forth in defense of their kingdom. The thousands of devoted foot soldiers, unswerving in their loyalty and unrivaled in the harmonics of war. That their armies face northwards to garrison the Great Bastion and defend it against the Ruiner's powers is perhaps a blessing, for should the Celestial Dragon Emperor have to turn his legions towards the nations of the West, the threat to all that may be unleashed does not bear thinking about. And of course, there's mechanics that uh, we'll get into when we actually start playing. And so, Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon, uh, sister of uh, Xiao Ming. So Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon, reigns across northern Cathay and commands the armies of the Great Bastion. Cold and aloof, she has ruled over the northern provinces for centuries and maintains their defences with strength of arms and wondrous war machines. For the Great Bastion is the shield that protects Cathay from the ruinous powers of the north, and while it stands strong, so too does Cathay prosper. Faction effects are minus two corruption, which is very handy, very handy indeed. Corruption is going to be something that we will have to deal with, because, uh, well, chaos is going to sweep over the lands in uh, quite an awesome fashion from time to time. Leadership plus 10% when fighting against demons of chaos, again, very useful. Ammunition plus 20% for missile units, very, very handy if you're playing defensively. Um, and we will be playing defensively in a lot of cases, because we've got the Great Bastion to look after. And Lord Effects, minus 50% upkeep for missile infantry units of the Lord's Army. That is astoundingly good. We will be filling her army with elite archers. It's going to be great. And Harmony, plus 3 Yin, which will make more sense later. We're also going to play on Hard and Hard. I did say in the campaign preview, we're playing on Normal, you know, for all the previews, so it's more representative of, uh, of, of your experiences with the game. But now we're actually just playing a campaign. Um, I want to I want to up the stakes a little bit so we can play on hard and hard. So nothing too major, but hopefully it'll throw us the odd curveball. So let's find out. Grand Cathay is the land of the Celestial Dragon Emperor. Before the world was blighted by chaos, the Celestial Dragon learned how to take human form. To aid his rule, he took a mate, the Moon Dragon, and they had nine children who became noble rulers of Cathay's many provinces. Of the nine, four have been lost to time and enmity. Miao Yin, Storm Dragon, was the firstborn, given the honour of ruling the northern provinces and charged with Cathay's defence as commander of the Great Bastion. But the predations of chaos grow. The Bastion is under strain. The power of a god may aid in securing Cathay's borders. Perhaps there is an opportunity to lure the Storm Dragon into the Chaos Realms. I travel east to gain an audience. Grand Cathay, a vast empire to the east, ruled by powerful creatures, dragons, who can inhabit human form. You are gravely mistaken. We have no interest in a mere god's power. No interest in power to use against the forces of chaos? I am Yao Yi, the Storm Dragon, older than the gods themselves. You are here for a greater purpose. This map shows the energy of all things. There should be harmony. But the world is unbalanced. My younger sister, Shenzu, bringer of light and hope. She ventured beyond the Norskan mountains, but was lost. Without her, without her light, darkness prevails, and our family has no comfort. Though I feel your loss, the Tome of Fates provides no insight to your sister's whereabouts. Ursa knows he witnessed her fate. Then why does he not tell you, Iron Dragon? There is mistrust between dragons and gods. If we save Ursa, he will tell us how to find Shen Tzu. Let me serve you, mighty dragons. I can reach Ursa. Lead you to him before it's too late. For one drop of his blood. Your destiny is to guide us. The armies of Cathay must breach the Maelstrom and march into chaos. Balance will be restored to the world 
when Shenzhou is returned to you. Our goal is clear. To find the lost sister, we must hear the God Bear's testament before he passes into myth. And uh, I've said this uh, several times before, but I absolutely adore the fact that gods just aren't seen as gods. They aren't revered in the same way in Cathay as they are in the rest of the world. So the dragons just see them as, you know, other beings to chat to occasionally, but generally um, a bit of a nuisance. So the idea of actually just needing Urson as a witness to something that does matter, I think is, is really interesting. I am the anointed guardian of the great bastion. Any breach brings great dishonor upon me. So prove your worth, mortal. Yes, great matriarch. There is indeed a rupture in the great bastion. The forces of Tsinch invade through the ruins of the Snake Gate and have taken the terracotta graveyard. Further along, the bastion remains under threat from the Changer's forces, or as you know him, the dread power Chianchi. Yet, despite the enemy assaults, there remain brave defenders ever loyal to you. Bolster them, and they will gladly confederate with a revered dragon. You will need such allies, for it is on the other side of the wall where the threat is strongest. The eternal siege continues, for the dark powers are never sated. And there, the orchestrator of this woe, Kairos Fateweaver. Face this demonic oracle, lest he bring down the bastion. Fateweaver is insidious, and the invasion is only part of his plan. Rebellion festers in Nanyang's minds under the Changer's malign influence. Punishment must be swift to reinforce your authority. Before we can hope to take the fight into the Chaos Realms themselves, we must bring harmony back to Grand Cathay. There is much to do. Enemies. Enemies. There sure everywhere. is. So, the northern provinces, how they play. Well, we're going to find out how they play while we're playing, aren't we? Yes, we are. I already know the drill. So, engage the enemy. Under the malign influence of Qian Chi, the rebels from the mines of Nanyang approach with hostile hearts. They are fate weavers puppets to ensure strife as he attacks through the Great Bastion. Not that this exonerates such disobedience. They must face the dragon's wrath. We'll get an Astromancer for our trouble, which is fantastic. Might but first, let's mess him up. Storm. Hello there. So, Hulin. Let's get him. All right. Wow, this is uh, a lot more sinister than I've seen this map before. I think there's been an update since I recorded the campaign preview. Uh, or maybe the weather is more random than I thought it was. But anyway, so we have our Jade Warriors in the middle. We have our Celestial Dragon Guard. We have our Peasant Long Spearmen. We have our Peasant Archers. And we have our Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen. So Peasants are obviously the uh, cheapest lower tier units. Jade Warriors are the nice mid-tier professional troops. And the Celestial Dragon Guard are the elite of the elite. They guard the dragons themselves. So they've got to be pretty important because... Well, dragons don't seem to need a hell of a lot of protecting, um, although, um, okay, she doesn't look totally fearsome now. Quite fearsome, she does have lightning hands, but anyway, um, she'll look more fearsome in a minute. And we also have our hot air balloon, the Sky Junk, with rocket batteries on it. There's the rocket battery uh, nozzle. Do cannons have nozzle? Is it a bore? A, uh, I mean, a barrel, potentially? I don't know. Who can say? Possibly someone who knows things about about cannons. Anyway, so we've got Earth Blood and we have Storm of Shadows. Though we are going to lose access to those once she turns into a dragon, which is something that she can do because you know, of course it is. <laughs> we are going to trigger the Wrath of the Storm as well, though. We're probably going to start getting shot at in a minute, so I'll just I'll just do that, and I'm going to do that. Okay, then we're going to do Wrath of the Storm. And I'm going to do Transformation of the Dragon. So we're using all the abilities that I can't use once I'm in dragon form. So here we go. Miao Yin. Excellent. Looking good. Okay, now go kill that Lord Magistrate. Good. 
And you know what? You can you can stop shooting. I don't think you need to keep doing that. You're just going to hit our own guys if you keep doing that. But God, don't you just love the maps? These like rice paddies and things. It's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Such a big fan of the maps. And Cathay is just, so, it's got so much character. So much character. It makes me really hope that uh, we see a huge improvement to uh, all of the maps around the Empire. You know, once we get the combined map, you know, sort of Bretonian maps and all sorts. I hope we get a lot of a lot of new ones with new details. It's asking a lot, of course. It is asking a lot because those areas aren't the focus of this game. But we can, we can, yeah, we can dream. We can hope. Okay. So our peasant horsemen here, they're not great, they're not great, but, as you can see, come on, no, no, peasant horsemen, thank you, I keep accidentally hovering over other people, uh, 86 kills, sorry, 89 kills, although the, this board doesn't update anymore, uh, live, it sort of does it from where you click on it, so you can see what they're up to when you clicked, it doesn't, I don't know what it is, if they're trying to save on CPU, if it's a bug or what, um, but that is something that's changed since Warhammer 2, so I don't know quite why. I'd like to know why. I'd like to tell you why. But I can't tell you why. I honestly have no idea. There we go, he's running. Uh, but I honestly have no idea why this doesn't update live anymore. So, I am I am going to report it though. So we'll find out, hopefully. Alright, good stuff. So, Potion of Toughness. Very good item to get this early. Really good item. So it's going to heal us. Uh, and also give extra armor and melee defense when we trigger it. It's a really good item to have. I'm really glad we picked that up early. Marvellous. Uh, okay, then we're going to... Um, I'm actually going to pardon the captives, because we're going to have an additional turn where we're loitering around anyway, and we didn't take many casualties at all, so we don't really need the replenishment. And uh, this only lost a turn now. This, I think, used to last three turns, usually. So, you know, the next few turns you'd have bad replenishment, but this is only this turn, so you don't have to worry about it so much. You can just go for the money. So I'm going to pardon the captives to get the money. So that Lord Magistrate and his army are dead, although we did pardon a bunch of the captives. And because I, I really just think the magistrates, you know, would have been the ones who have been corrupted by Zinch. I don't think the whole population would have. I think they just would have been uh, doing what they're told, as is probably drilled into them in an empire like Cathay to do exactly what they're told at all times. But anyway, so we did that. We have an Astromancer now. We have a Potion of Toughness. Those that consume the Potion of Toughness find their skin hardening as swords and arrows glance off their body, even as parts not covered by armor. And he is dead. Send your hero to join your army. Can do. Can do. And the dragon needs you. Recruit two new heroes. I like the pun on the um, the, the recruitment posters from World War II. <laughs> so, send messages to Nan Gao that uh, you require more soldiers. Sorry, more warriors. Same, same difference. As you continue to purge Grand Cathay of Rebellious Taint. Restore the balance of harmony, which is this thing up here. This will tell us our harmony. We're on Yin 4 right now. Do you want to build some things? Uh, either characters, events, buildings, or technology in the Yang column, so we can get balance. You'll notice that the current effects make Yang uh, buildings a bit more profitable and uh, a bit cheaper to build, but Yin buildings have far less income with minus 15, and control is down minus 6 faction-wide, but if we get it into harmony, we'll get a lot of really good stuff, as you can see, greyed out down below, so uh, diplomatic relations with Cathay go up, building uh, cost go down across the board, growth goes up across the board, Yang and Yin buildings both get an even bigger bonus to income at 25% each, control plus 8 faction-wide, corruption minus 5, and you get an army ability, ancestral warriors for all armies, which is also a lot of fun, it lets you summon a, a a unit of, like, ghost palpadeers that'll chop people up for you, which is lovely. So, Cathay factions should strive to maintain stability between the forces of Yin and Yang. Achieving balance leads to rewards, while extreme imbalances can cause unrest and other debilitating effects. That's fine. So, you time. Head to Miao Yin, Mr. Nanman. Good. I also love they're using, um, uh, surnames <laughs> from 3K, essentially. Yeah, you know, we've got the Nadmen, uh, we're, a, we're a faction. The all their tigers. Dragon. That was cool. I hope we get I hope we get Cathayan tigers at some point. I'd be down for that. Uh, right, so, let's get some Iron Hail Gunners. Um, I love them. I think they're really fun units. Better on the defense, but still 
great if you can get him into position. So also, for anyone who did watch the campaign preview, this first episode is going to have much of the same beats, but I also don't want people to be watching this episode having not seen the preview and wonder what the hell is going on. So, you know, hopefully you guys won't mind seeing it again, knowing that whatever happens in this episode will actually... it'll actually matter, because we'll be doing enough, a follow-up episode. Many follow-up episodes. So hopefully you guys can be patient with me if you've already watched the preview. And uh, soon we'll be doing new new and exciting things before long, I'm sure. So anyway, this is also going to be a longer episode, so that helps too. So technology, drill training, hardened bamboo, and fletching mentors. So uh, as you can see, we have harmony. It does show on the research screen as well. I love that they put that there so you don't have to keep back, like you know backing out in order to... Uh, keep track of yin and yang. So you've got all our yang buildings up top, yin down the bottom, and if you go straight through the middle of the tech tree, or tech, whatever shape you'd call this, um, then these are all, uh, I guess, in harmony. They're neither yin nor yang, which is nice. So let's go for towards, yeah, let's go towards Jade Stance. Um, so extra leadership for Peasant Long Spearmen. Most of our garrisons will have some Peasant Long Spearmen, so it's not a bad thing to have. And Jade Stance here will give us extra Vigor Loss Reduction for Jade Warriors, so they won't tire as easily, which is very All good. As units get tired, they lose a bunch of their stats. Yeah. So Vigor Loss Reduction really helps them stay in the fight um, and sort of out outdo anything they're fighting against. So, Caravans. This is another thing that we can do. Uh, so, you, know, you don't need to tell me. So this uh, uh, Jiong uh, Dranmu? Jiong Dranmu. I'm sure I nailed that. Uh, so this guy, you can see his army down here, this caravan master. So this will change, you know, depending on who we have. If we look at the recruitment tab, uh, this guy, his trait is that he's an ogre ally. So you can see he actually starts with ogres in his army, which is pretty cool. And he also has some uh, other bonus there, extra allegiance points gained for alliances with ogre kingdoms, which we, we haven't, you know, we're not doing that yet. We already have a caravan, uh, a caravaneer, I suppose, a caravan master with his uh, with his army. So we're going to send him on a mission. So we're going to up the amount of money that we get for it. We haven't made a lot of enemies yet, so most of the roads are fairly safe. And we're going to send them straight to Eringrad, where the most money can be made. So it's going to cost us a grand to send him on his way, but we'll get nearly five grand back once he's finished his journey. There will be a bunch of events as we go. You can see these different nodes, every path. It'll tell you what the threat is like, and there is a chance that this caravan will get attacked while he's traveling. He will show up on the campaign map, even though he's controlled by this UI. So he will just every turn, just zip from one node to the next, and you can actually change where he's going each turn. So you can actually say, you know what, I want you to take this route. Or this route. So if we know that things are going to get very dangerous later on, we can actually check to see which routes are dangerous. We can we can ally or get non-aggression packs with certain you know ogre kingdoms in the mountains of Morn here, and just help him help these guys get through safely if we want. Or we can just take our chances and hope for the best, which tends to be my my strategy if you can call it that. <laughs> but occasionally it just means you have a battle, and that's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, we can dispatch him, and hopefully he'll earn a lot of money. Good. Good, good, good. There he is. See? He will be on the campaign map, and he'll always come from our capital. So, uh, Meow Yin the Storm Dragon. Yep, you're recruiting, and I think that means we've done everything. Brilliant. And uh, I'm not speeding this up. Uh, I will be cutting out turn time, so don't think I'm misleading you when things start fading from the beginning of a turn to the end. I will be cutting out loading times, and they do increase in, in length as the game progresses, you know, later turns. Just like every Total War game, it takes longer for the AI to move their multitude of armies about. But in the early game, it's very, very fast. So uh, bear that in mind. So yeah, nice quick loading times, but I will be will be cutting them out later. Uh, so now that you're here, we should go take the Mines of Nanyang. So we did get our two units, as asked, and now they actually want us to take the Mines of Nanyang, which is perfect. So the Mines of Nanyang are held by rebel lords under the sway of Qian Chi. Their continued existence defiles Cathay and risks further sedition in the region. They must be eliminated. And we get a potion of speed. Just getting all the potions, apparently. All right, let's go get them. And I suppose we have to fight it, don't we? Because, you know, how would I, how would I, how would I skip this? That would be silly. And actually, that'd be very silly. I'd lose three units if I skip it. I'm not doing that. Let's attack. Also, I cut out all the loading times between battles, of course. Uh, but anyway, yeah, who could, who could skip the first battle? You know, the first siege that we do. That'd be ridiculous. 
I do there? Maybe I hide you over here and put him this way. I'll try and grab that. I'll try and grab some of these areas with my horsemen. But we're just going to focus on one entrance uh, ourselves. And yeah, we'll try and capture some other points. So for anyone unfamiliar, uh, there's always one key building capture point that you can take that will grant, well, it'll deny the enemy uh, a bunch of melee de uh, defense buffs and leadership buffs. So that's useful to get. It helps the enemy defenders defend these other capture points. They have a bunch of nodes uh, connecting to places where barricades can be built and uh, towers can be built. And if we deny them these capture points, then all of those things will collapse and they won't be able to build there anymore. And it also stems the flow of resources um, going to the enemy that they will be able to use to build all of those barricades and towers. So they're definitely worth taking. Although, if you split your forces up, then it's more likely they're going to be able to, you know, the different towers and uh, it's easier to defend, frankly. So if you split up too much, you're just going to get whittled down, you know, from various areas. Uh, you don't necessarily know where they're going to focus their defences, so you could end up with a bunch of units stranded. But if we just have a cohesive uh, group here, then they can only really build as many towers here as there are nodes. So there's going to be fewer things trying to kill us, hopefully. And we'll have all our tools at our disposal to fight back. So I prefer, I prefer focusing on one entrance for the most part. Certainly when we have an army at this size. You know, later on I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll get a bit carried away. Alright, so Iron Hail Gunners, really good, absolutely love these. They are fantastic, they are among my favourite units. Absolutely adore them. I just really love units like that, I think they're really interesting. Sort of, you know, they're shotgunners, they are very short range, which makes them very vulnerable, but when you get them into position they just do such insane damage. I find they're a very rewarding unit in that regard, you know. If you get them into position, you get just crazy rewards for doing so. And to me, that's way more fun than a unit that's just good, you know? It's just like, oh, it has higher stats. Like, okay, fine, but I don't get to feel clever for having used a lot of units. Iron Hail Gunners, I feel clever when I get to use them properly. Does that make sense to anyone? I hope it does. Yeah, I hope it does. Strategy games, I think, are best when they make you feel clever for having done something strategic. But, you know, when there's just an obvious answer. Oh, yeah, like Jade Warriors. They're just the, they just have the best combat stats of my units currently, so it's a no-brainer. I put them in combat, and that's that's their job. You know, I'm doing the, I'm doing it right <laughs> if I do that, and that's a bit boring. So let's get some heals in there. These guys aren't gonna be able to get um, shots in just yet. And uh, all right, let's use some support uh, abilities here. And you can see our Iron Hail Gunners are taking horrible damage from their archers because they are very vulnerable to archer fire which is another reason why you feel clever for using them correctly okay you can charge in uh, I'm gonna slow them down I don't really need to I just figure I'd use some spells <laughs> I do have some more spells here though oh also guard mode is on there is a bit of a bug at the moment where guard mode uh, sometimes turns on even when you are uh, like when you've got uh, the option, you know, in the options menu, to not have it on by default. Sometimes it'll just turn on by default, even when you have it unticked. Which is a bit annoying, but, you know, still pre-release build, guys. Little random bugs like that always crop up. That's just the nature of game design. So, let's move you. We are going to get to dragon mode now, so I can hop over these walls. And I didn't realise how much damage my sky jump had taken. That's astoundingly bad. It's because this tower's attacking us. See, so yeah, the sky junk also really quite iffy on the attack. Also quite iffy. Alright, see if you can get rid of that barricade. You guys move in. You guys move in. You guys move in. Everybody move in. Everybody move in. I guess this is going well. We're probably going to have won before... Um, before we really break through all these areas. Getting a lot of kills with the Sky Junk, which is nice to see. Okay, I'm going to actually turn back into a, a lady. Because I want to use my spells. I want to use Earth Blood. Oh, interesting. The cooldown actually freezes. I didn't realize that. That's an interesting, uh, interesting thing to be aware of. 
Okay, you guys aren't going to be able to get line of sight, but you guys are. Destroy that piercing tower, please. Thank you. Okay, good. We broke through. Let's keep capturing. And now let's use Earth Blood on the Sky Junk. Because I want to get this health back up. I want to get it back up. It'd be pretty rough. If, uh, if we had to wait ages for it to replenish. Okay, let's slow him down. Nice. <laughs> Very cheeky. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, no, it's Peasant Horseman. Oh, and they're coming with backup. Oh, our Peasant Horsemen are probably going to fail now. Oh, you know what? We'll have to turn back into Dragon at our earliest convenience. At our earliest convenience. Okay, good. Sky Junk's never going to get there in time. And uh, you guys still getting shot at a bunch by this tower. It's almost destroyed. Archers can destroy these fairly quickly. Uh, you have your line of sight blocked. That's strange. That is quite strange. <laughs> oh well. So, dragon time? Not yet. Not yet. Alright, how are you lot doing? Alright, the enemy reinforcements have arrived. Oh no. Alright, start running. <laughs> Go get them. Oh, the Lord's there. Oh, they got another tower over there. That's not good. Alright, let's see if we can move over that way. And you lot. Um, I don't know, I guess you guys can just move up this way. Okay, good. Transformation of the dragon. Let's do it. Hopefully, our peasant horseman will hold out long enough for backup to arrive. Hopefully. Power there, it's very annoying. Alright, come here, you. Come on. Go go bail out our peasants. Which is a very selfless thing for Miao Ying to be doing. That's more her uh, brother's remit. You know, actually bothering to to treat humans as anything other than um, that a possession or an asset, you know? To actually treat them like, oh no, their lives are in danger. This, yeah, not really her brand. Ooh, I think those peasant horsemen might be out. I could run them away, but I just know they're going to get chased by the peasant horsemen and then I'm not going to be able to catch up to them. It's just, you know, it's going to be a bit of a pain. But, screw it. Let's try and run. Wait, you're going to try and run that way around? Well, now you're just asking to be murdered. Alright, we're going to try and move. Ah, oh, they ran. See, I thought that would happen. I thought that would happen. That's what I was worried about. That's what I was worried about. Alright, you guys move in. I want to capture that next point. Because if I can do that, then I'm laughing. Okay, let's line you guys up. I'm a bit annoyed by this tower that they built here. That is also controlled in the middle, which hopefully we'll get to soon. I don't know why you guys are so insistent on forming a conga line. And that's going to sting. Yeah, that's a wind blast from the Rastromancer. So one thing they have done, which I think is brilliant in this game. This is just a, an astromancer which is a hero, and at level 1 they only have access to harmonic convergence, as you can see from our um, our astromancer. But this one, he actually has more spells. They've given him wind blast as well. So the fact that the garrison uh, the garrisons in this game it isn't just like a basic uh, green recruit. They actually upgrade them a little bit. I think it's fantastic. I think that's really good. So, iron hail gunners. I'd love to shoot this cavalry, honestly, but, uh, you know what, I think I'm going to have to. And, alright, let's see this. Okay, come on. Shoot. Nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah, they've, they've had enough. <laughs> you were bait. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy being bait? Bless them. Okay, I do need to shoot these guys now. I don't like that this tower is still shooting at me. I really don't. I mean, I could attack it with uh, with Miao Yin, actually. Let's use a potion of toughness and get stuck in. Here we go. It's more like it. Okay, good. Probably be suffering army losses in a second. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, some of our Jade Warriors got a bit tangled on that... Uh, on that hero. And our balloon did survive. So that's good news. Very cool. Yeah, the Sky Junks, I think, are super interesting units. It's, it's, the sim it's a similar thing to the Iron Hail Gunners, where 
they're delicate, easy to catch out. You know, you can definitely get them killed very easily. But they are just such a great asset that you have no choice but to to risk using them. You know, you have to be quite clever about them. Which again, it's just that thing about strategy games I said. It's just, it's good when you feel clever for having used them. Um, <laughs> I didn't feel that clever that this guy jump took that much damage, but still. You know, the 342 kills, you can't really say no to that. So we also got a Crystal of Kunlan. Interesting. Having soaked up the celestial energy left by the birth of the Dragon Emperor, the stone uh, protect its bearer, but can also unleash sorceress energy when struck. How cool is that? I've never got this item. So Kunlan is um, like the city of gold. Um, it's it's a it, it exists in folklore, in Chinese folklore um, as well. But yeah, Kunlan is uh, is a gold mine. Uh, in in Total War Warhammer Three, we'll we'll go. Well, not north, up on the map, I suppose, because, you know, the way this map is sort of skewed funny. But anyway, if we go up that way, uh, then we'll find Kanlan, and we've got to get a gold mine out of it. But yeah, really cool, look at the crystal of Kanlan. So I guess that's where the, the Dragon Emperor was born. You know, I didn't know that history. It's really cool. The idea of him being born is just alien to me. Like, the, the kind of the mythos is that he existed forever, right? <laughs> Basically. So, yeah, ward save... 5% and Crystal of Kanlan, which is an explosion. Really want to see how that goes. We'll need to see if that ability is something that we can use on um, uh, on Miao Yin. What a cool item. Okay, let's take it. it. Yeah, really good. I mean, she can equip it, of course, but it's when she's in dragon form that I'm wondering. If we dive her into combat and then, uh, you know, blast them with, with that spell, it'd be really cool. Oh, this is so exciting. I never had that item. I've played a lot of this campaign already. Never had that item. So we captured the mines of Nanyang, which hilariously, um, if you look at the building browser, there, there isn't actually a mine here. <laughs> there are no mines to build, which is a little bit strange, but it is what it is. So, maintain control of the following one province. Gunpowder Road, which is of course where our caravans move through. So we want to take this settlement. Uh, that is the last settlement of uh, Gunpowder Road. So that's good. The Gunpowder Road is a major thoroughfare of the northern provinces, allowing the artificers of Nangao to transport their wares and weapons across the empire. No part of this region should remain under rebel control. We'll get Quicksilver armor for this one. Speed, plus 20%. That's really nice. And the plus 25 armor is good too, but... Big speed bonus. Might give that to Miao Ying. Might give it to her. So we've got some levels, of course. Um, so we'll need to level her up. Uh, route Marcher, we actually have to take on turn one if we want to reach the next settlement in a single turn. That literally, that 5% campaign movement range makes all the difference. Uh, also, we're not going to go in on all the spells with her, because we're going to use our other spellcaster as our primary spellcaster, because there are so many spells that you can't use when you're in dragon form. So what I think I'll do is go Inspiring Presence, and we'll start upping our uh, Peasant Long Speeman, our Celestial Dragon Guard, and our Jade Warrior units, which is great. I love this skill point, and that is something that Warhammer 3 does very well. There always seems to be skill points that cover every tier of a particular type of, uh, of unit, rather than just focusing on, like, you know, some low-tier thing. So I really like this. You know, this, this, these skill points are never a waste of skill points. Next up, the Astromancer. I suppose I'll give you a potion of speed. Do we need to give that to him? I'll probably give that to somebody else later. He doesn't need it. Um, he will eventually have a, a Wuxing War Compass, which is cool, as a mount, which will let him do more magic, which is a lovely thing to have. Um, I only have Scouting, I think. No, you know what? I want to get Oranon's Thunderbolt, because I didn't get to show you guys how great Oranon's Thunderbolt was in the campaign preview. At least I don't remember being able to. It's a really good spell now. So good. It's more like Warp Lightning in Warhammer 2. It's way, way better. Way, way better than it used to be. So, now that we've got this done... Uh, oh, brilliant. This is also lovely. So, another thing with this campaign is we have the training camp in, this, uh, in the mines of Nanyang, but there's no guarantee that it'll be a training camp, because it's just an empty slot when this game begins. And so... It's a bit random what the rebels choose to build here. So I prefer it when it's the training camp, because otherwise they just build a, like a, the stable building, whatever it's called. Uh, what is it called? A corral. And I don't want that, because peasant ho horseman recruitment isn't useful to me. But getting jade warriors on turn two is incredibly useful to me, because these units are, are kind of the core of our army and will be until we start spamming Celestial Dragon Guard, which won't be for quite some time. And of course, the skill points will still 
benefit us that we'll be spending on buffing these. You know, it'll still benefit us when we've got Celestial Dragon Guard as our front line instead. So, really cool. Really cool to have. So, uh, I think that's it for the turn. Let's crack on. So, uh, Duran Mu is under attack. Uh, Jiang. As the caravan comes to a halt for the night, a stranger one oh he's not under attack. Oh, this is okay. A stranger wanders into the ad hoc camp. Stopped by the guards, he begs an audience with the caravan master. His offer is to join the retinue for no pay. There is safety in numbers, but he will help protect the caravan. Um, so what's hilarious is um, well, it's great that we can get Empire Captains and also um, high elf nobles you can get through this event. Um, I don't know what else, but what was very funny is <laughs> Uh, in a test campaign when I was just like learning the ropes, I had this event, got myself a um, high elf noble, and then the very next turn I had another event where some ogres were basically just like, oh, give us some meat and we'll let you go. And so I was just like, here you go, and just gave them a high elf noble to eat and went on my way. <laughs> so there really was safety in numbers. It was fantastic. <laughs> so yes, let's get the Empire Captain with us. Um, the stranger may prove useful should the caravan come under threat but they have a strange look in their eyes so because i had this event and then just fed them to ogres i don't know if there's a follow-up event for like this guy stabbing us in the back or something i have no idea but i can't wait to find out that's the beauty of these events i love these like rpg elements that are added it's really cool so the redhorn tribe have been destroyed that's fine by me uh seal the gate capture and occupy the following settlement we will take that eventually not just yet but soon so the Snake Gate is breached and under the control of Chaos. Retake the Fortress Gate to secure Grand Cathay and maintain your honour as the Great Bastion Sentinel. We'll get a Tormentor Sword. Great weapon! We are getting some really good items uh, offered up to us here. Really good stuff. Ready. So, destroy the following faction, Sartorial's Watchers, which of course, uh, you know, lovely, lovely um, reference to Sartorial, uh, the Everwatcher, who is sort of the orchestrator of, uh, of, of the story of Warhammer 1. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see. Good to see their faction sort of referencing that. Um, also, you know, Azinchi and faction will definitely want... Sorry, Chian Chi faction will definitely want to deal with them. And the Ogre Blade is actually another pretty good weapon, depending on who you give it to. So, yeah, good stuff. We will get round to that as well. But for now, uh, you know, this guy... Do we need to chase them down before we go to Nan Li? Will, will Nan Yang be able to look after itself? Because it's not going to have a great garrison. Uh, if I leave it alone. Although it doesn't look like he can reach anyway. So yeah, let's go to Nan Li. And he'll probably come and attack us. So that's fine. And uh, you know what? You stay there a second. Uh, yes, let's get more pottery. So with pottery, I want to try and get some trade, get some more money. As you can see, we are absolutely broke right now. We are not earning a lot of money at all. So a potter is a craftsman who fashions clay into pottery and other ceramics. From fine crockery to the most basic bowls. We're learning something about the Warhammer world and how clay works, the mysterious magical substance known as clay. Uh, let's attack. Alright. God, beautiful, isn't it? I love the maps. You know what? I'd never actually looked over the edge here, but it seems that we are, like, this city itself is on a floating island too. <laughs> That's so cool. Seems that we are actually on a floating rock. How had I not noticed that before? God, look at this. Anyway, so Cathay is gorgeous. I love it. The cities themselves, just amazing. The amount of detail really is staggering. Really is. Such an upgrade over over the sort of the maps of uh, Warhammer 1 and 2. Really great. Alright, let's... Um, I think we'll put a few this side. I'll put a few to the side. Also, one thing, by the way, is um, because I enjoy the variety that the different um, the, the the different sort of positions around a map will will give. What I tend to do instead of you know going oh it's this map again I'll go to my usual spot that is like you know like over here no maybe not here because <laughs> that's you can't pass through that but you know. Here is always the best place to deploy. I'm not going to do that. I'm basically going to deploy where I land. That way I'm in a different spot every time. And it keeps it varied. Which I think will be better for you guys. But of course, you know, you guys are free to make your own decisions. How much you want to sort of mid-max. Um, you know, where to attack and where are the best zones to fight from. But I won't be doing that. 
I won't be doing that. I, I have more fun when there's unique challenges to have, have rather than just the initial challenger going, where's the best place to be? And then that being the answer for the rest of time. I, that's boring to me. I like attacking various places. It's way more exciting. So, let's get you moved up. And you. And actually, let's start healing up our sky junk. I do want to make sure that we keep healing that, if if at all possible. Uh, we're going to move that way with our guns, I think. And, okay, good. Celestial Dragon Guard that are getting shot at. Which, I know, I don't really want them to get shot at. I just don't want the Sky Junk taking more damage. You know, poor thing. Alright, you can take another shot then. And actually, here, I think what I might want to do, we'll put the peasants in first, because they have charge reflection. So they can literally just sit there and, and soak up damage for us, and uh, reflect some of the enemy charge at us. And I'll just try and get these guys behind. So that way, I have, um, I can shoot them on the slopes if these guys decide to come at us. Hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. Okay, one more heal. And now, let's go dive on top of something. I'm not sure what. I suppose we'll find out, won't we? So that's your Dragon Guard. Go that way. You guys go that way. And... Oh, good. Good, they're doing it. <laughs> Love it. Got rockets flying overhead. And just the beautiful blue skies. It looks so good. It's just, oh, it's such a good-looking game. See what I mean? I'm immediately more excited now that I'm just starting a campaign, rather than doing campaign previews. Like, this is what I enjoy. This is what I enjoy Warhammer, knowing that I'm here for the long haul. It's what I enjoy. Which is odd, seeing as how I sort of cut my teeth uh, on the franchise. Um, certainly on YouTube, anyway. Mostly playing um, multiplayer, but... <laughs> oh well. Things change. I like the story. I'll probably end up playing some more multiplayer at some point, though. Because obviously this is such a different, uh, different experience from the other ones. It's going to feel very fresh. Which, uh, and whole new meta, with whole new, whole new armies, and even just the balance of the, like, older armies has changed so extraordinarily since I've been playing, um, you know, since I used to play multiplayer a lot. But, yeah, entirely, even the old stuff is going to feel brand new. They'll certainly have a lot of brand new things to fight, so even the old stuff will have pretty unique experiences attached. Oh, I thought you'd broken already. Not quite. Now you've broken. Alright, let's keep moving you. We're dealing with them. I just want to capture this point. We're almost there. These towers will just, like, just fall over. They'll just fall over in a minute. Okay, Iron Hail Gunners. Let's line them up in those entrances. Let's bring them up here. Uh, you guys. I mean, I guess I'll put you to one side so you're not in the way. So units aren't as good at pushing past each other. Uh, in this game, as they have been in previous games. Oh, hang on. Oh, you can attack. I thought there's a barricade still there. That did get destroyed. It's just elements of it still remain. Because certain um, pieces of like debris in this game have a have a sort of, I guess, a sort of lifespan for when they like appear. So it takes a while for them to disappear. That may get addressed in future. It just doesn't seem like a pressing issue. You know, if that is a if that is a bug of some kind. It's certainly not a very important one that it's fixed. It's just, um, occasionally you glance and go, oh, oh, hang on, that's still, no, it's not still there. <laughs> We're good. All right, let's move up. And, God, our Celestial Dragon Guard took quite a beating, huh? Quite a bit. Uh, so, I know this is odd, but I'm actually going to shoot these guys uh, with artillery because that will affect their leadership. There is a leadership debuff associated with being attacked by artillery. And, okay, it didn't happen this time. I, th I didn't think it would, but I thought it'd be very funny if it did, so I was going to risk it. Uh, I have had, in the past, I have had that debuff be enough to trigger army losses <laughs> and win me the win me the fight. And it'd be really funny if a guy just having a bunch of explosions around him freed him out and he ran away. That would really, that would really butter my parsnips. All right, come on, guys. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that. One volley from each of them has half of the unit's health gone. Half the unit's health. 
Oh, it's just brutal. Oop. Camera's being a little funny because the terrain. <laughs> Amazing. Barely get anywhere. So, do you want to stay on target? It's because you're still on guard mode. Silly. And let's get a nice shot into these Jade Warrior Crossbowmen. They're going to be very crossbowmen once they get shot by this, uh, <laughs> this rocket battery. Not bad, not bad. Oh no, more out of fire. It's a little scary. Alright, let's also use the Potion of Toughness now. Uh, yeah, Potion of Toughness. There we go. Good stuff. Yeah, one more volley for old time's sake. <laughs> Good stuff. So yeah, not many kills the Sky Junk this time around, actually. But that's okay. We didn't need his help. Excellent. And we've got this standard of Wei Jin. Wei Jin is the capital of Cathay. It's where the uh, Celestial Dragon Emperor and Moon Empress reside. The Dragon Emperor's banner inspires those of his warriors fighting in sight of it while seeding disorder and panic in their disharmonious opponents. That's actually pretty good. Plus six leadership and minus four leadership. That's really good stuff. That's going to be very handy for something like... Uh, I mean, as odd as it seems right now, I think our peasant horsemen are probably the best unit to put that on. Because I think anything that can sort of have a rear charge, I think would be really good just to have that additional enemy leadership penalty. I think that could be incredibly useful. So maybe. Or I could put it in the front line and then it'll just sort of naturally um, debuff whatever's being fought. And if I happen to rear charge it, then that leadership debuff already has the... So yeah, maybe i just give it to my front line. It'd be less dramatic, but probably more effective. <laughs> Let's be honest. But anyway, uh, Nan Lee, what are you doing, eh? What are you doing? Are we going to occupy it? Maybe I think we're going to occupy it. So we have the standard of Wei Jin, Gunpowder Road has been taken, which is great, we can give it a commandment. So we've got the Sea Dragon's Edict, which is income from trade, faction-wide, which is very handy. Uh, this is a great edict to, to place on all of your uh, dragon gates. You know, stuff that you don't really gain much from. So uh, actually this is a good one too. So we also have the Fire Dragon's Edict, which is... Um, Local recruitment capacity goes up, which is something we will be doing now, I think. Because I'll want this for next turn. Because I'm going to be raising a new army. That's right. Also, the Storm Dragon's Edict. Campaign movement range, minus 20% for enemy armies. Uh, start in the region. Corruption, minus 5. Melee defense, plus 5 for all armies. Research rate, plus 7. Control, plus 4. Chance of plague spreading, minus 40%. So there's some good stuff here. But we're going to go with the recruitment one. The we are going to go with that. I feel like my income is really quite poor this time around. Hmm, is it normally better than this? I don't know. I don't usually remember having this much of a problem with money. Uh, so many caravans here. <laughs> Just a pile of Indeed. different caravans. That's really great. And there's ours. The there's ours. I don't know where he found an empire captain in the... In the, uh, uh, what's it called? Warpstone Desert. He's very strange. But, you know, I'm not going to argue. Uh, so, we have done that mission. So we've got the Quicksilver Armor. Very nice stuff. Very good to have. I may give that to uh, Utang Nanman. Although, do you have armor yet? No, you don't. In that case, I give it to you. The extra speed on a dragon sounds great. Sounds very good. Lovely. Oh, we're getting some great items. Oh, also, I never actually used um, this ability. Uh, does that just trigger automatically? I wonder... It says passive ability, so I guess we just didn't notice it blow up. But it just means every 60 seconds when she's in combat, she'll do an explosion. So we just need to keep an eye on that. But that's awesome. That is really cool. Right, so, uh, what should we get here? Unyielding, of course. We want to buff all our Jade Warriors. Its iridescent alloy plates flow fluidly over one another, lending power and grace to the wearer, yet hardening instantaneously at the point of contact. Very cool. You can draw one province, but more land must be acquired if you are to f uh, uh, fund a successful war machine. Send out your armies to seize territory from your enemies. We're getting to the three grand for that. Lovely. He's probably going to attack us. He's probably going to attack us because he's got no territory anymore. So uh, we should be able to dispatch him in a second. And now I think we want to go with a couple more Iron Hail Gunners. Mostly because they are an absolute bargain. Absolute bargain. Although actually... Although I would like more of them later. I think I'm going to go with the Peasant Archers just so I have better, um, a better firing arc. I think that's probably wiser. 
So I'll go with that. And they're also dirt cheap. Seriously, getting half price uh, ranged units is insane. Absolutely insane. And yep, he's attacking us, as I thought he would. Uh, so I could auto-resolve this, but then I'll lose my peasant horsemen. Aww. Poor peasant horsemen. Not that I really get much use out of them, honestly. So I could, I could do it, or I could defend. It's a tough one. I think I might just let the horsemen go. Um, and let's attach the leadership penalty to the Celestial Dragon Guard. Because they're, they're the most likely to actually stay there and and uh, continue debuffing. Alright, let's auto-resolve. Screw it. And we got a Sword of Swift Slaying for that. That's very nice. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Tao. Thanks. Brilliant. Uh, I'm going to go with Venerate. Because I want to be able to move quickly after this fight. So I want that replenishment back. Another encounter. The Troll. Sorry, the Toll, not the Troll. Imagine if it was a Troll. I'd love to encounter a Troll. You know, on a bridge or something. Or under one. Uh, up ahead, strewn across the road, is a crude barrier. Bandits stand upon the blockade in defiance, demanding cargo from your caravan as a toll to continue. Refuse, and they will attack. So I give them some, some cargo, which of course is that initial uh, thousand... Um, I was going to say thousand pound investment. Thousand gold, I guess. Thousand whatever investment that we made initially. So we'll end up getting a lot less when we reach Eringrad. But... The Blood Guzzlers will like that we keep paying them when we go through. It is a toll at the end of the day. But uh, I don't like the idea of playing nice with them. I think we're going to draw weapons. Oh, also, although the Blood Guzzlers are sort of involved in this story, this doesn't affect diplomacy widely. So if we draw weapons, it doesn't mean we'll be declaring war on the Blood Guzzlers. This will always spawn just a generic Ogre Kingdom faction to fight. So you never have to worry about sort of this ruining your reputation or dragging you into a bunch of wars or anything like that. Um, it, it'll always be sort of self-contained. The bonuses obviously have larger implications, but the, the, the events themselves, you know, aren't going to drag you through anything unless it's, like, actually mentioned. So, draw weapons. So, I think we're going to fight uh, Grummus here, just because I can. Okay. So, this is horrible. So, we're in the Warpstone Desert, which, of course, is the, uh, the area that... <laughs> that our astromancers destroyed um, by trying to uh, do a genocide on the Ogre Kingdoms. Instead, we killed a lot of them, but we also created the Great Moor uh, when we, we brought a Warpstone Comet down upon the land. This used to be just a beautiful land of meadows that the Ogres used to roam around in, but then they got a taste for, uh, for human children, and obviously you can't have that, but... I mean, talk about the nuclear option, you know? It's just, oh, I don't like what these ogres are doing. Let's just nuke. <laughs> let's just, let's just nuke an entire, you know, country, essentially. There's a huge swathe of land. Just, we'll just, we'll blow it up with a nuke. Perfect. I know it's not technically a nuke, but it's, it's a warpstone comet. It's much the same. All right, so we do have some jade warrior crossbowmen as well, which is cool. So nice to see them. And uh, we also have the Jade Warrior Halberds as well. So we have a nice variety of unit types. With uh, the standard Jade Warriors, some Peasant Long Spearmen, the Halberds, the Peasant Archers, the, you know, Jade Warrior Crossbowmen. So very traditional sort of army. We also have this Empire Captain. Look at that! So we, have, we have units of other cultures just hanging out. I know there's the Outpost System as well, but um, it's just lovely. There are events that just go, yeah, screw it. All, all kinds. All kinds of people in the Empire world. Let's uh, let's mix it up. It's just very fun. It's very fun to have sort of mixed armies. So, man-eaters are coming for us. Man-eaters, of course, are the... Man-eater is the title given to Ogre mercenaries. Okay. In they come. And you can tell they're Ogre mercenaries because they're wearing just random detritus that they earned on... Uh, oh, don't go for them. Go for the Peasant Long Spearman. Come on. You love the charge resistance, don't you? You love the charge reflection. <laughs> oh, what happened there? I see another spell go off. Oh, Brain Gobbler. Ruining the leadership of our Jade Warriors. That's very clever. They actually seem to be quite cleverly trying to break in here. Break into our ranks. Interesting. And now they're trying to cycle charge. 
Doesn't matter though, we've got a bunch of archers chasing them. And again, yeah, guard mode isn't staying off at the moment. I need to go in the options and uh, turn it off again. Because yeah, guard mode by default, I'm not used to that. I put on guard mode if I want guard mode. Causes all kinds of problems. Alright, good. Getting some work done. The uh, Saber Tusk packs are brilliant. They're so cool. Absolutely terrifying. I mean, they're just saber tooth tigers. It's pretty straightforward. But uh, a cool unit. Cool unit. They are large units, so spears are good against them. And uh, also, they rampage. So although they're incredibly quick, large, scary monsters like that, you know, big weapon strength, uh, you can rampage them. So you do a, a certain amount of damage to them, and then they just freak out and charge into whatever's nearest. So it's a really good way to make sure that they end up on spears, is to get some damage into them early. And uh, put spears in their way. Just make sure the spearmen are closest to them. And they'll run straight into him. Marvellous. So we barely took any damage there. Got plenty of experience. We got some more money for the treasury. Um, so I could... Uh, so we got extra loot. Now, one thing that is a bit sad is I really wish there was an option, if you're a caravan, to ha to invest that loot. But then I guess you couldn't necessarily buy more stuff to trade while on the road, right? So it goes to the treasury. Kind of makes the most sense, but I don't know. I think it'd be an interesting idea if you are dragged into a battle to sort of loot for for things to trade, essentially. I think it'd be quite cool. But anyway, um, let's go with, yeah, Venerate. I want to go for the uh, Replenishment Raid, even though we haven't taken that much damage. We will be suffering attrition, depending on which, uh, you know, route we're taking. There's all sorts of things that can slowly whittle them down, and they get very few opportunities to actually get their health back. So Replenishment is very handy. Yeah, we take it when we can. All right, Storm Dragon. Unyielding sounds good to me. Oh, faction destroyed, the rebel lords of Nanyang. So that was the rebel army we were attacking, you know, the rebel uh, foe. A uh, sword of swift slaying, a sword of silver that never dims. When used in anger, the sword arm of its owner darts forth before an opponent can even raise their guard. Very cool. And that's just being equipped on her for now. We will have better weapons to equip her with later, but since it's the only weapon we have so far, she may as well have it. Uh, Orin's Thunderbolt. Love that spell. It's great. It's very good. Although, interestingly, um, the Uxing War Campus actually has a bound version of Orin's Thunderbolt, but it calls it Orin's Thunderbolt. That's just the character. Okay, it's not telling me the... It's not showing me the bound spells, is it? No, it's not. Never mind. There's a bound spell. Uh, of Orin and Thunderbolt, but it's called Celestial Thunderbolt instead. Um, same with the Comet of Cassandora. It's just called Celestial Comet. So it's really interesting, I think, that they, there's their own brand of Heaven's Magic in Cathay, because it makes total sense. It was the Celestial Dragon that taught mortals um, how to harness the Wind of Heavens, Azir. So... It should be named after him, right? He's the teacher. It wasn't Urunan who came up with the spell. It was the Celestial Dragon that came up with the spell. So, they should all be Celestial whatever. So, you know. I like it. It's a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Though, I guess just for the sake of um, ease of use, I'm glad they didn't change the name of all of the, the Heaven spells to Celestial whatever. Because then it would be a bit confusing what people are talking about. And does that mean it's going to be different than the other spells? No, no, no. No, but for a bound spell, just as a, a unit ability, Storm I think it's really cool Dragon. that they changed that. So I could get some more units here while I'm here, or I could try and get that other army up and running, which I am tempted to do. Because what we're going to do with Miao Yin is actually head over to uh, Tai Tzu over there. And, oh, hello, Mal Bob. <laughs> Great name. Uh, so we're going to head over to Tai Tzu over here. You can see the Skaven Corruption. They're a Skaven there. And I want to kill them. Uh, then we'll head down and, and take out these other rebels, which are pretty much like they're mostly here for the sake of um, of, of our brother down here, um, Jaumin. But I don't care. We can take this before him easily, so we will. And uh, Nan Gao, I think I think we want to get another army. It's just our upkeep is very poor right now. I know that we're getting a lot of money from quests though, so I don't mind being in the red slightly. But I think we might have to ration Miao Yin's army to just this. Uh, for now. So, uh, oh, I'm also thinking we need a turn of replenishment. It's going to take three turns to get there otherwise. Yeah, that could be a bit of a pickle. Could be a bit of a problem. And it's two turns to get here too, and then it'll be two turns from here to get to there. So we may as well go from one end and move our way down, even if it takes a bit of time. I just don't like the damage that we've taken on our infantry. 
So I would like to stay for a little longer. I might just wait a turn and get another army here. So we'll go with a um, blood a a dragon blooded. I always say I always say like bloodle dragged or something. I don't know why, but dragon blooded I just can't say. I always somehow get it twisted unless I really think about it. So bear that in mind. Uh, you'll be you'll be hearing me say that wrong a bunch of times I'm sure. So Yin is currently on five. So we should get something that's Yang, because we also inherited a Yin building that's tipped that further. So let's go for, uh, yeah, let's go for Yang. I want to go for Yang. I actually like Law of Yang more, I think, than Yin. So uh, it's more hostile. It's just more aggressive, which is cool. So I'll put Corruption down. I'll put Control up. I think we're going to go with Corruption down. So we'll get uh, Chun uh, Duranmu who I think is <laughs> related to our caravan master. So that's fun. Uh, so blood drad... Uh, blood dradded. What, what is blood dradded? See what I mean? I can't say dragon blooded. Anyway, the dragon blooded, Shugangan, dragon blooded means that they are uh, the children or grandchildren or whatever um, of dragons and people, right? So it's dragons that have got a bit frisky with their subjects, I guess, which is... Very weird to me, but let's not get into it. Um, you know, in human form at least, but it's still weird given the power dynamics. Ugh, I don't like it. But anyway, dragon blooded um, is what that is. But Shigangan basically is is uh, like uh, it's a path of enlightenment. So these are the elites of the kingdom, the Shigangan, and that seems to be unrelated to the dragon blooded aspect. I think you can become a Shigangan without being dragon blooded, but like. Just being dragon blooded bestows so much just inherent power that it's, yeah, it's almost you're destined to end up high in the ranks, um, just a result of that, you know, inheriting that power essentially. So let's get some things. What are we going to get? So our income is quite poor. Okay, it's not great. <laughs> I've seen better, but we can go pretty cheap with this army, and it's not a problem. Uh, we can certainly go quite cheap. So I'm actually going to go global recruitment for, you know what, not for them, for them. And then I'll go with three of those next turn. So two turns, we'll have not a great army, but actually not terrible. Like, this will be able to hold fairly well. Um, in fact, I will get one of those, even though it's a little bit more expensive. So we'll do that, and hopefully we can live on war spoils for a little while. Okay, it's risky, but... If we can grab this stuff quickly, that will benefit us. Because in this campaign, there will be moments where we have to just sit tight and not do anything. Which is obviously a bad thing. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we've taken territory before... Well, before the events of the story take fold. I won't spoil it, though I'm sure most of you have seen it already. But I'm still not going to spoil the events. But you do need to be prepared. So I do want to spread out quickly and get that uh, get like a decent base sorted. So even if it does mean running at a deficit... I'm fine with that. So yeah, you're going to stay there. Then we're going to go March Stance to get deep into their territory. We should be able to reach Taitu a turn later. So we shouldn't be spending any more turns than we would otherwise, but we'll get more replenishment this way. So that's the plan. And now the Uxing Compass is available to us. So this is a lovely little uh, thing we get. So the Uxing Compass harnesses the winds of magic to bring prosperity to Grand Cathay. Directing the compass fills the respective energy reserve the greater the energy reserve, the larger the benefits are. However, the energy reserve of all directions will decay over time. So the Great Bastion, um, if we point it this way, the Great Bastion threat will go up uh, slower, which I should point that out. That's this bar up here. Whenever this fills up, well, we'll receive an invasion, basically. So we will need to make sure the Kurgan Warband isn't, uh, isn't coming. We want to get the Snake Gate before then. Or else they'll just start pouring in and attacking everything, which would be a bit of a bother. Can't have that. But uh, So that is affected by the compass here, if it's in the Great Bastion direction. It'll also lower recruitment cost, and it'll give us the Celestial Intervention uh, Army ability, which is an explosion, it's a bombardment that we can use, which is very cool. So that is tempting. That is tempting. Extra casualty replenishment rate as well. But I actually like the idea of getting growth, because I think we need to build tool. I know I'm spreading armies out everywhere, but we also want to make sure that when we are taking territory, we're able to just build it up in a hurry. So I'm going to go with the growth this time round, I think. It'll also give us extra income, which is very useful because we're broke. <laughs> so that's important. Uh, Dragon Emperor's Wrath. Uh, this will actually put up control in the region, and when it maxes out, 
you can press this button whenever you like, and this will actually just damage, um, it'll just give heavy attrition to all the enemies that are outside the Great Bastion. It's weirdly worded, but it literally just means all of the areas bordering, you know, sort of touching the Bastion along here is, is what it means. So it's just a couple of provinces worth of stuff. Or is it just the one, actually? It might just be Eastern Steps. Oh no, Eastern Steps goes this way. So no, it's, um, it's, it's a couple of provinces worth. Though I don't think this gets it. So maybe you can't even split it up into provinces. It's confusing, but it's just that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so, we will need to pick something. We're going to go with Celestial Lake. Strength determined by energy reserve. Always active and then active when direction is set. So this stuff you get when it's pointing that way. And then this bar will fill up. The other ones will go down. Uh, if we swap to something else, that bar will go up. This one will start going down. It's, yeah, fairly intuitive. Just point it to the thing that you want. <laughs> That's it, really. Uh, okay. So, Garrison Lord not moved. I know. That's the plan. Unassigned skill points. Oh, Caravan Master leveled up. From fighting those ogres. Uh, I'm going to go with... You know, I would love to put some of these up. So we can have higher cargo or you know, higher cargo capacity or higher value. But I am quite tempted to try and make sure that his army is safe first. You know what? Screw it. We'll we'll do one of these, okay? We'll go with better sales, because we'll get this when he finishes his journey, but cargo capacity, we'll only be able to make use of this skill point when he's back home and we're sending him on another um, another journey. This isn't gonna we we can't fill up that capacity even if he has it now. So we'll go better sales. Sorry, better scales. Alright. That'll do. Let's crack on. Okay, as we are on minus 100, that's okay. Uh, some Kurgans no. did did wander in <laughs> through the gap there. Okay, we'll probably have to deal with him. It's a bit annoying, but we'll live, I'm sure. So, we have some upgrades to do as well. So, drill training technology has been done. So, harmony brings unity, and unity brings efficiency. The warriors of wind and field must be taught to trust one another implicitly, for each is an extension of the Dragon Emperor's will, fighting as one. Good, and in fact, we are in Yin 1. Oh, really? Well, that's annoying. What building did I build? The Celestial. The tipped that. Oh, sorry, no, it's because I got three from her, three from that. Oh, look at the technology, I thought would have pushed it more. Interesting. Is it, is it, is it you? Are you a bit Yin? Dunno. Not sure, actually. I feel like we should have been in harmony, but that's okay. Um, so the Mines of Nanyang, I will upgrade. And Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon. Get over to Taizu. Brilliant. Oh no! It's a Skaven. Excellent. Alright, you uh, keep recruiting. I guess that's it for the turn. Really quite a quick turn. Not much to do. We did just meet Karakazorn, though. So what I do love is you do end up meeting a bunch of new people from your caravans exploring the world. And, now this is something that I probably should have done earlier. We haven't bothered to actually do any diplomacy yet. So Celestial Loyalists. Actually, let's do a quick deal, shall we? So quick deal, trade agreement, and now we can see everyone who wants to trade. And Karakazorn, that we just met, is one of them. And also, you'll notice we can trade with everybody, because they've got rid of trade limitations in this game. You don't have to actually worry about having a route from your capital to theirs, or making sure you have, you know, a port, and they have a port, and that the, the water that your port is on doesn't go off the map. You know, the water doesn't go off the map, or anything. There's none of that nonsense. They just went, oh yeah, trade with everybody. And the economy is based around the ability to be able to trade with everybody. It's just, it's easy. It's, um, yeah, such a simple change. They literally made the system less complicated and it's better for it. So, initiate diplomacy. Let's get everything. Let's get all the things and we'll click balance offer so they throw more money at us. Brilliant. The dragon. And yeah, there's a balance offer button now. And a quick deal now. Like, it's, it's, everything is better. <laughs> in this. It's so good. Military access for you too. Sounds good. Balance the offer. They want to give me a grand. Suits me. Karakazorn. Apparently it's time. Uh, give me some money too. Only a little bit, but he's willing. Burning Wind Nomads also want to trade, so let's do that too. And uh, uh, balance the offer. Good. And now the Western Provinces don't want to trade. I think they just did, but I don't think they like... Oh no, they are trading with them. I'm sure there was one more. Did we annoy somebody? I don't know. Not a clue, but that's fine. Who wants a non-aggression pact? 
Nobody wants a non-aggression pact. Oh, that's upsetting. Oh, <laughs> we're not very popular. Uh, no one wants military access either. Well, I guess the non-aggression pact and military access pacts uh, we had covered already, didn't we? Because we asked them for them when we were getting trade deals. So, yeah. Okay. That should do it then. Cool. We actually have a bit of money coming in now, thanks to all the trade and everything. Good. We should be able to support these uh, these peasants, mostly. Alright, let's crack on. Grout. <gasps> hungry, hungry ogres. Oh no. There is a stench on the air, the unmistakable aroma of cooking bones. A band of ogres burst forth, drooling, dripping, sorry, drool dripping from their mouths. They look on hungrily at your retinue. Their leader shouts out, uh out his demand. They'll let you pass if they can eat some of your meat. And they don't mean the cargo in your caravan. Mostly because we're a bookseller, but, uh, you know. Uh, so we could we could let them have a unit of Jade uh, Warrior Crossbowmen, but I'm comfortable that we could defeat this army, so I really don't need to waste my time with it. And it's going to be the same battle as before, but on a new map. So just for the sake of showing off yet another map, I'm going to do it. So this is the Battle of Tsar Nagrund. So we're in the Dark Lands. Uh, so this would be basically uh, where the Chaos Dwarfs would live if they existed. But god, look at this. All these little craters from meteorite impacts. The, the background looks a bit strange though, actually. The shadows. So I'll have to report that because that looks a little bit strange. But anyway, uh, yeah, amazing, right? How cool is this? So this is the sort of terrain that you can come to expect from the Badlands as well. Because you know, many maps are getting a bit of a uh, a bit of a facelift, which is great. But yeah, I love this. Got all these geysers everywhere because of all the volcanic activity. Very cool. You can see what the chaos dwarfs like it here, huh? You know, if they existed. And oh, some chaos nonsense going on here too. Uh, so all the steam, by the way, and mist effects in this game it appears to be like volumetric, and so my PC hates it whenever I go too near them. <laughs> it's very odd. But yeah, Steam is, is the killer. It really is the frame rate killer these days. Yes. I know, right? So you see these little icons? That's because uh, uh, Harmony is actually in effect. So uh, for each of these guys, you'll see there's this little Harmony thing here for Yin and Yang. So if you're actually nearby uh, units of the opposite uh, side of the of the spectrum, then you get bonuses. It's only a certain degree of units, though. And there's a different intensity as well. You can see t intensity is at 150%. But yeah, it's only... Um, I, think it's, I think it's one for one, or I think it might be two to one. Um, so, effect intensity increases by highest nearby harmony uh, multiplier on a unit. So yeah, some some just have better. I, but I think it is just one for one. I think, it, I think it's been tweaked slightly since I uh, first started playing this... this uh, you know, the pre-release stuff, though. I'm, I can't say for certain. But I feel like it changed a bit at some point. But maybe not. Maybe it's in my head. Anyway. You lot. Go mess him up. And you know what? Brown took a bunch of damage there. Took a bunch of damage. So, this is going well. Uh, these ogre bulls. It's ogre bulls this time. Not, um... Not man-eaters. So, these guys are technically a little bit worse. Man-eaters are pretty good. They're like tier 3... I think, whereas these are like tier 2, or 1 I think actually, Ogre Balls. I think these are the basic Ogres. Alright, come on. Come on guys, let's finish them off. It's just, a, it's, just some, it's just some cats, okay? Ooh, quick, brace, brace, brace. Quickly. Quickly. Oh. They didn't quite brace, did they? <laughs> Judging by the ones who flew away just then, I'd say probably not. Say probably not. Alright, you guys. And you. Also, I love that they, they've got little sleeping, you know, little Zeds on enemies just signify they're not doing anything. It's a really nice touch. It's such a simple thing, but just being able to see at a glance if someone's idle is really useful. Like, I've got a few units, you know. I've got a few units out from time to time that have been sleeping. Okay, they should be breaking soon. Amazing that he's actually charging back in. I wouldn't have bothered. But yeah, Slaughter Master, Lord of Great Moor. So, you know, new spell type. New Lord of Magic, the Lord of the Great Moor. And it's gone forever, so <laughs> let's carry on. 
Alright, so we dealt with them. We got some extra experience and cash. And I think we're going to go with Venerate, because that will completely just replenish all of our units, which is really great to have. Should keep us safe for, um, you know, events to come. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, that's so annoying. They attack straight away. So, settlement besieged. Nangal. She walks among us. An old woman, garbed in peasant robes, beckons you over with a gnarled finger, never breaking eye contact. She presses something into your hands and then bows and walks away. You make to discard the surely worthless trinket, then notice a silver moon inscribed upon it. The mark of the Empress! <gasps> moon hag! Um, so anyway, we got a trickster shard, which puts up miscast chance of enemies for a bit. Yeah, honestly, I think this is a bit of a rubbish one, the miscast uh, chance thing. I really wish this would change um, to sort of corn's mechanics. So there's a bunch of corn units that basically have a modifier, that they have like an ability that anything in range of them casting a spell just immediately takes damage. And I think it would be better if something like Trickster Shard just did that. It was just an aura of if you cast a spell within range of me, you will miscast. You know, something like that I think would be way better, like way more intuitive and just it it would be less finicky. Because like, when, when do you know that someone's about to cast a spell? You can only tell when someone has cast a spell. So just using this, like, reactively is impossible. You just have to use it on a spellcaster and hope they happen to cast a spell during the 16 seconds. Which is a bit rubbish, you know? So, I don't know. I find these items a bit funny. I, I hope they get retooled at some point. So, a shard of pure aqua. So you mean ice, then? Its surface ripples with a malevolent curse bestowed upon it by, a, uh, by the trickster. Any magic users nearby will surely suffer. But it's not, though, is it? <laughs> See, that's my problem with it. So, anyway, hopefully it'll get retooled. Uh, so we're just going to auto-resolve this um, so we can kill them. It would be nice to defend Nan Gao, but also... Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to auto-resolve. I'm just going to auto-resolve. And then we are going to Venerate. And then we should get uh, the rest of those next turn, unless these guys attack us next turn, which they probably will. I don't think he'll be able to reach, but then I wasn't sure the other guy would be able to reach either. But we'll get there eventually, guys. We'll get there eventually. Invader destroyed. So by defeating that army, that has actually lowered the Great Bastion threat, which is novel, because it was the threat was being enacted, essentially. The threat was them attacking me. But now they're less likely to attack me, because they're dead. It's very weird. So the Dragon Emperor is pleased. An army of chaos threatening the Great Bastion has been defeated. Right, so, you there. Uh, Dragon's Breath is a fun spell. Uh, we have Strength of Yang, which is the lore modifier, and a bunch of other spells which we will get into as we start collecting some of them. We also have the ability to get some bound spells from the uh, from four of the eight laws, which is really cool. I really like this. Because, I mean, that's the thing. We're dragon-blooded, you know? We're, it's not a simple mortal. Uh, and I actually said dragon-blooded correctly. How great is that? So the uh, the dragon-blooded Shugangan here, they can channel any of the winds of magic much more safely, because that's the thing. Um, the yin and yang are basically... Uh, sort of versions of high magic. It's them getting magic from, you know, across the spectrum, right? And using that, you know, shaping all the winds of magic into the spell they're casting. So they can channel all the winds of magic without without risking themselves like a, like a normal human would in, you know, in most cases. There are There is the odd exception. But, yeah, generally, you can only uh, channel a single wind of magic without tearing yourself apart. But yeah, dragon blooded have no problem with that. So of course they have these other bound spells that they can utilize, which I think is really cool. It's a really nice touch to give them that. Uh, it really makes them feel more um, more significant than your average spellcaster, which is good because they're a lord, so they should be. But anyway, we're going to go with inspiring presence because I do want to start getting unyielding, so my troops will fight better. Uh, do need that. Do need like the core of my army to hold, or else casting a bunch of spells isn't really going to matter because it'll be overrun before the spells can turn the tide. So uh, great. Here is where I wanted to end the episode, basically, which is perfect. So, Taizu. Gesundheit. Uh, so, Clan Eshin are here. Who would have thought? We're going to declare war, obviously. Because uh, I want to kill Deathmaster Snitch and steal his ability to go invisible. Because that's the beauty of it. When you defeat a legendary lord in combat, and Snitch is a legendary lord, then you always get a trait for having done it. And his gives you um, Stalk. Which basically means you can hide not just in forests, but just generally, you will just be hidden. So the idea of having a dragon, who if you you know the enemy is too far away from you, um, and they you know they can't see it, but just be invisible as a dragon, just chilling, being invisible. 
I mean, it's so good. It'll basically make her immune to artillery. You know? Turning her into a dragon is going to make her a big, massive, obvious target for cannon fire. But not if they can't see her. So, really good thing to have. Alright, war has been declared. Good. And sadly, Snitch isn't home, which is really disappointing. I'm incredibly disappointed by that. But we are going to fight this battle because it's going to be an interesting place to fight in. It's going to be a Skaven settlement. And even the Skaven settlements have changed as of Warhammer 3. So I do want to um, play about with that. So that'll be a fun way to start next episode. So guys, I'm really thrilled to actually be starting a campaign now. Just going, you know, screw it. All the piecemeal bits and bobs. Like, there'll still be the odd thing that I'll throw out there. Um, but generally I just, I like just to get stuck into a project. Um, so I immediately just feel better. Like it's a weight off my shoulders. Just trying to fit in with a bunch of embargoes is really irritating. Um, I really hate working like that. So just knowing that I have this banked and I can just, you know, release the content whenever I'm able to, it just feels good to just, just to get stuck into a routine like that. So anyway, guys, I hope you're enjoying it so far and there'll be plenty more to come. So comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all the YouTube stuff. You know the drill by now. This probably isn't the first video you've ever watched on YouTube. I'm sure you'll you'll manage. Uh, also, there are links in the description if you want to pick up the game for yourself. It will help me out a huge amount if you buy them from the links below. Uh, so I'd appreciate it. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Laters.